Comic Book Provided by John the Comics, Glendale, Arizona's premier comic book emporium. Hello everyone, and this is Reboot Day, Reboot of the DC Universe. So we're going to be reviewing the two major books that came out today, which is um, Flashpoint number five and Justice League number one. Just before that, I want to go over a book that came out um, a week or two ago. It was um, Ultimate Fallout, which is a fallout of things that happen in the Ultimate Universe. It was interesting. This is the one that actually really introduces you to the new Spider-Man. This is the half-black, half-Latino Spider-Man. It was an opening. Can't really say it was really bad. Can't really say that it was good. As far as introducing a character, you got, okay, there's this new character, the Spider-Man. So obviously once the actual story comes out, I'm sure there'll be a lot more twists and turns and put into the character, but this was just basically an introduction that there's this new Spider-Man in town. What I found, found more intriguing actually in the book was there was a um, little vignette where it's revealed or at least implied that in this ultimate universe, during the war, the big war, World War II, that the U.S. was probably responsible for creating mutants. And as it was set up, because this was set up as a reporter breaking the story, talking to someone who was actually in that part of the government and saying what sort of sources she had and basically saying she's breaking the story, I found the way that it was handled was realistic. Now, it may not be fully realistic, but I could see where if someone was told about this revelation that was coming out, I could see the person in the government basically turning the wheels the way they turned them to try to spin the story before it actually went out and went out of control. So I thought that was a pretty tense little thing. It wasn't so much of a shock, though, that the government might have created mutants. In a sense, it made sense. Um, now, we could say there was a little bit of heroes in this, I'm not going to mention why, but there, there were elements in it when they, when they gave the big reveal that the government probably created mutants with, when you figure that the government worked on the super soldier serum and a bunch of other things, why would it make sense if there were mutants or if there were the possibility of mutants that the government would make it? So that made sense to me. So liked it. I'm kind of intrigued on how the story's going to go, so I'm probably going to follow it some more on that. Now for the two books. Let's start off with Flashpoint number five. The best I can say is I'm glad it's over. It kind of had promise when it was a mystery as to what happened. This reveals everything. And it was a bit of a letdown. It was a little of a bit of a letdown as to the reason for it happening, the whole flashpoint. It was one of, it was one of those things that hmm, okay. That just seems stupid. Best way to think about it, because I don't want to really give it all away, but Think of the Superman movie when Lois Lane dies, Superman goes back in time so he can save her. Think about the consequences of him going to save her. Because remember there was that dam in there and that's the reason why he had to like stop the raging river from going over the town, but that was why Lois Lane died. So when he goes back, he actually saves Lois Lane, but in real life, he would have wiped out, he wouldn't have been in there in time to like change the river's course or to have wiped out all those people. That's essentially what the whole plot line was in Flashpoint. That's what it was. Flash went to do one thing which caused a catastrophic thing down the whole timeline. And again, with Flashpoint, people were kind of killed to be killed. They were killing people right and left. And then there were big reveals like, oh, this person showed up, oh, they're dead. Oh, this person shows up. To, oh, they don't, they're dead. Oh, this other person shows up. Oh, they're dead too. But it doesn't matter because you can go back in time and fix it. The question remains in Flashpoint, if you really want to get nitpicky about it, is he in the 
new DC Universe or is he, did he correct the DC Universe? Obviously, he's in the new DC Universe because when I looked at, when you look at the um, Batman costume, it's actually the new costume, uh, but it's kind of like Flash doesn't realize that it's a whole different continuity and I think that's kind of the point as the story was progressing. It was, I didn't hate it as a story, it's just something we've been through before. And that's why I can't really say I loved it with a passion, but it's kind of like when you look at the whole, if you look at the whole series of books, this is one of the better books, which it better have been since it was the whole linchpin to what they're doing now. So it was, it was good, but I can't, uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm kind of glad it's over. Now for the new one, Justice League number one. What was that all about? It's Justice League number one. It takes place five years earlier. It's, it's intriguing. And I know that sounds kind of like, ooh, that's not like a good answer. But actually it is. You are introduced to Batman. You're introduced to Green Lantern. And you are kind of introduced to Superman. And actually you're not introduced to Cyborg, but you're introduced to Victor. And here's what we get. Batman, I think in every universe, is going to be Batman. He is the same, I have, I know what I know, and that sort of thing, and he's Batman. Green Lantern, what an arrogant guy. Green Lantern is very arrogant in this. And it's kind of good because, again, we're talking about a reboot, so... He still hasn't been the Green Lantern very long, and he, he, he mentions about the whole galactic thing. The thing is, it is also so new into the people in the universe, that in this DC, new DC universe, that they really don't know what to make about superheroes. And there are a couple of superheroes that are already out. Superman is more in hiding. That's why Superman's introduction was kind of quick in this particular story. It's going to be, I'm sure, expanded in the next issue, expanded more. Uh, Victor is not cyborg yet, so he's still he's still the football player. He still hasn't been turned into cyborg. We do know that his father, it is mentioned that his father actually is doing research into these super people that are around. Batman is actually so much of a mystery that Green Lantern thought that he had some sort of special abilities, and he doesn't. But Batman does show some quickness because he's able to take the ring off of his finger. Green Lantern's finger, which is a Batman thing to do, but I don't know. That might have been pushing it a bit. Now here's what I would say is the intriguing thing. There was a alien that came into the picture. Batman was fighting it. That caused Green Lantern to show up. When the when they got the creature cornered and essentially the creature created, committed suicide, the creature said, "For Dark Side." And yes, the Dark Side, not the Dark Side, but you know, Dark Side. So Dark Side is in the story somewhere, and that's all you got. You just got that this creature said, "For Dark Side," killed itself. And they're kind of going, who's Dark Side? Even Hal Jordan doesn't know who Dark Side is. So Dark Side is this new player in the game. Lex Luthor, obviously he's not in this yet, but there are Lex Corp signs that are about. So Lex Corp is around. Again, not sure what form or function, especially in looking at the um, at what happened in Flashpoint. Not sure what Lex Luthor we're going to get. So. There is enough intrigue in the story as far as who's here, who's not here. I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to follow this a bit longer to see how this book is because it piqued my attention enough to where I want to go, okay, how are these other characters going to fit in? And the story actually worked. I mean, let's face it, it's Jim Lee's art. It's going to work. The writer did the job he was supposed to do, which is to introduce these new characters but they're also slightly different from the characters that we know. So, all in all, I say that Justice League is good. Now, 
we're going with Justice League is good. Next week is when the real rush is going to happen. That's when you're, there's going to be a bunch more books that are coming out. And I'm sure those are going to probably piece this universe a little bit better. Right now, like it, want to visit it. If I had to base it on Flash, if I had to base it on Flashpoint, I'd probably say, no, I don't want to go there. But in looking at Justice League, number one, I'm going, so far, so good. So that's how I'm looking at it right now. We'll see next week when more books come out and see how those go. So until next time, see you soon.